First of all, I'd like to call up Ray Whitehead. He's the founder of Direct Democracy, and uh, he'll have a few words for you. So we'll start with Ray. I'm Raymond Whitehead, and I'm the founder of Direct Democracy Ireland. And we're here today, today to launch a new political service. And I'm stressing service because even though we're a registered political party, our aim is to transform and to put back the power of referendum into the hands of the people of Ireland. We're not here to party. We're here to serve and to give that power of referendum back to the people. Representative democracy is an outdated patriarchal system. It is competitive, macho, based on secrecy, power and control. Whereas direct democracy is a matriarchal system based on openness, cooperation, communication, transparency, and a sense of empowerment of all throughout our society, giving a sense of empowerment and ownership over our own lives and our own communities. And it's supposed to be democracy, yet constantly we're being told what to do. These politicians that we elect don't listen to the people. And Direct Democracy Ireland is here to put that power back into the hands of the people. And this is not something new. People think this is a new thing that we're doing. This goes back to our first constitution in 1922. The founding fathers of the Irish Free State gave the power of referendum to the Irish people. You needed 70,000 signatures to call a referendum on anything to guard against the very abuses of power that we've seen over the decades. And this was taken away from the Irish people without recourse. It was taken out of our constitution without recourse to the people being able to have a referendum and vote on whether they could do that or not. It was just stolen from the people of Ireland. They were supposed to put it to a, a referendum within two years. And what they did was they extended that two-year period to eight years and then at the end of that eight years, they extended the period that they had to put it to the people in a referendum by another eight years, effectively denying people their constitutional right to vote on whether this could be taken away from them. The whole country sent a message to Mr. Hogan, and we were completely, and are being completely ignored. So Direct Democracy Ireland want Articles 47 and 48, or the principle of Articles 47 and 48, reinstated in our <coughs> constitution to take back our voice as a people. Here, here. Direct Democracy Ireland has, is now on a recruitment drive. We, we're sending out a message to the people of Ireland to join us and to organise themselves. To appoint representatives and candidates to serve your communities and our country in a spirit of communication and cooperation where the people are partners in an ongoing political process. It is a time to revisit the wisdom of the founding fathers of the Irish Free State and return the spirit and power of Articles 47 to the people of Ireland and take back our voice and our sovereignty as a nation. A political system that treats people like idiots and simpletons who can be lied to, dictated to, ignored and even criminalised you can see Minister Hogan about that, has to change. We ask the people of Ireland to join with all of our people in, trans in transforming our country, reclaiming our sovereignty, and reclaiming our assets for the good of the nation as a whole. Thank you very much. You have a war going on in the world at the moment, and it's a war that's taking place in Wall Street, and it's the Third World War. And it's very, very serious because what we have is competitive devaluation. When all the first time we're living through a unique time in history, all of us. And it, this is the first time in history that every currency in the whole world is backed by nothing except fresh air. <laughs> That's what allows them to keep printing to the point of our enslavement and our poverty. Once we understand that, we can make changes. Without understanding that, we will be their slaves forever. Yes! yes. yes.
In March 2012, Bank of Ireland purchased a promissory note of 3.01 billion at 6.8%. The ECB allowed the bank to value this bond on their books as Irish sovereign debt and tier one capital in order to meet some of their liquidity requirements. I'd like you to note, Direct Democracy Ireland regard this type of bond transaction as part of the odious debt and any other bank who may think of doing the same thing, please take note. When the people of Ireland give DDI a mandate, and please, please do, give yourself a mandate, yes. because that's what this is about. The sale of state assets proposed by the Troika and the government to pay this odious debt will cease. Please also take note that any contract signed or sales completed by that date will be treated as part of the original odious debt. <clears throat> Please also note any contract signed in relation to the disposal of state assets where irregularity or corruption is suspected will be legally reviewed. <laughs> You have 420 million people living in Europe under an economic and financial system no one voted for. You have 80% of our laws coming from a body no one voted for. You have 27 countries have accepted a system that makes Zimbabwe and China look democratic. <laughs> <laughs> if Ireland was run by 27 unelected members, there would be an outcry. We joined a common market, not a dictatorship. The EU has become unaccountable and undemocratic, and Ireland is paying the heavy price for the despicable, deplorable, and disgraceful, self-interested path chosen by the ECB and our board members. We have allowed our democracy to be hijacked by the bankers. Now, together, together, and that's the key, we stand and we take it back. to miss the connection between the monetary policies that brought the housing market down, which will in turn bring the bond market down. Conjuring more currency out of thin air will not help. Money is pumped by the ECB into bonds through banks and the debt put on our back as sovereign debt. The bonds will lose their value just as housing did. When the bond market collapses, and it will, we will be asked to pay off the bonds as they mature and interest rates could rise to 15 or 20 percent. History shows that a debt-based credit system of fiat currency will always collapse under its own weight. Boom, inevitably followed by bust. The ECB and our partners took the decision to protect the bondholders. If the ECB want to cover losses of professional investors, let them use their own bloody money. <laughs> chose instead to control through economic terrorism. The expansion of money and credit is the root cause of the finan financial and economic crisis in Ireland. This point cannot be stressed often enough. The crisis has nothing to do with different stages of economic development or a different work ethic. The government and the ECB are now dependent on banks to launder the odious debt. And the banks have become dependent on the ECB to provide them with cheap money. Effectively, we are a corporate state and the Italians have a nice word for that. As long as we the people are content to be lied to, as long as we the people are content to be lied to, rather than face the disgraceful truth, those in power can maintain the status quo. It's up to us. We can actually change this. But if we hope to make a difference in this country, it's not before time that something like this had had to happen. The current system is not working, and it has failed for the many. It has failed for the many, but it works for the few, and that's what the problem is. Too few, in my opinion. For a small island that is so wealthy in natural resources, most of the people struggle to make ends meet. They struggle to put food on the table. For too long, our state has been run by vested interests, cronyism, false promises, personal gain, and now we have corporate, corrupt foreign banks dictating our country's policy. They gave Enda Kenny the European Man of the Year award. I suppose a system that has a policy of Peter robbing Paul is always assured of the support of Paul. Um, 
This was the last straw for a large majority of decent, hard-working people in this state. And this is what has led us today to the formation of this new political service. What makes us different? Well, we are direct democracy. And direct democracy um, is inclusive, not exclusive like the others. So what does that mean? Direct democracy is a mechanism that shifts the power back to the people. It was in our first constitution in 1922, and the powers that be took it out. We need to put it back because it protects the people. The government are merely a trustee of the state, and the people are the beneficiaries. And I don't suppose too many of you feel like a beneficiary in the state today. <laughs> Only a few people benefit from the fabulous assets and resources of this country. We are just over 4 million people, and we have one of the richest countries in natural resources in Europe. We should all be well off. So why does one in four children go to bed hungry at night? Why are there two suicides a day? Actually, I just got the new figures on it. 1,563 suicides in the last three years. That's equivalent to a jumbo jet coming down every year. I mean, you know, you just couldn't believe it. The system is not run for the people. Senator David Norris put it well when he said, they have put the welfare of the people second to the preservation of a system that is rotten, corrupt, and criminal. The people's interests have been put second to the interests of the corporate elite who have pillaged this country's money and assets. The country is rich in assets, and I'm talking about our oil, our gas, our fishing rights, our mining, our forestry, and all our assets are having a great ben sorry, none of these assets are having a great beneficial impact on the people today. It is time for change, and it's time to put the power back where it belongs with the people. And that has to be done through direct democracy and the power of referendum. If we had direct democracy in our country at the time of the bailout, a bailout would never have happened because the bankers would have been told by our government that we would love to help you out but unfortunately we have direct democracy here which means the people have the power here and they will call a referendum within three days to block such a crazy move so you had better come up with another plan that the people will accept and that's how direct democracy protects the people and their assets so direct democracy sits like a protector if you will on governmental decisions it changes our whole political system back to the benefit of the people. Um, I actually have our government in court because they have gone off the rails so much. Most leading financial experts in the world cannot believe the craziness of what the Irish government have done to the people. So that is what I have done. I have the government in court because the debt is classed in UN law as an odious debt. And we believe the Irish people have no legal responsibility for these debts. And as such, the lenders of the money, the Troika, should have no real expectation of that money ever being paid back. <laughs> they have taken our sovereign money and assets, and they impose <clears throat> severe taxes and cutbacks, and stand idly by while they watch home evictions of families, while they pretend, of course, with a, a referendum, they're interested in the welfare of the child, because the state has such a good history in that. Um, also the repossessions of business and farms, the length and breadth of this country, and for what? They have sold us out to the gamblers and the bankers of Europe who acted in a criminal manner in this country. Imagine our only option in a so-called democratic country is to bring your government to court in your personal capacity. You don't even have the right of a class action in this country, and that suits the puppet masters in Europe. And finally, to every one of you, because together we can make a difference, and it's for our children. Let's hope our children, when time comes, will thank us like we thank our forefathers for the protection they left us.